Sand has been around for almost a century and a half now, and isn't talked about much in the wider public sphere. Could it be because of its coarse and gritty history? Or could it be its taboo nature as a product today? That question for now will go unanswered. However, you may choose which you wish to believe after this video. Regardless of the risk on discussing this topic, I will stand valiantly and bravely before you all today to deliver the official, comprehensive history of sand. In 1878, sand was brought from a mere concept embedded within one's own mind to reality. This was accomplished by Arnold Gromsberg of Cleveland, Ohio. He invented sand in order to fill in the missing textures found at beaches, so that children could play safely without running the risk of clipping into the ground. Innovation in the sand market began in 1882 as new types of sand that were made and distributed throughout the market, some of the most popular types of sand being glass, garnet, and gypsum sand. In 1899, Arnold Gromsberg would sadly pass away due to an unknown illness caused by his frequent inhalation of sand particles. He would leave his company in the hands of his grandson, Bill Gromsberg, who still needed to turn 18 in order to legally acquire the company ownership. Bill Gromsberg turned 18 on March 19, 1900, and on the same day accepted ownership of Arnold's company, instantly obtaining $870,000 in the process from uncollected checks over the previous year. That same year, he and E.J. Donner produced the first new invention out of sand, this invention being glass. Around the middle of June the following year in 1901, Bill would produce the first of many sand-related products, this one being the sandbox. It was invented as a means of breaking into the family home market, which at the time was not very strong, so his invention ultimately failed. After years of other attempts at the sandbox, Bill was left in financial burden which reached its peak on October 12, 1911, when the company was considering filing for bankruptcy. He decided on that day to try a new, non-sandbox related invention. Bill finished his work on his new invention on February 14, 1912, this invention being gravel. He began to plan an unveiling of this new product later in the year in late May. On May 29, 1912, Bill had a tub full of gravel placed above an unfinished walkway in the middle of New York City. Bill sat in front of the tub, holding onto a rope, which, when pulled, would dump the tub of gravel onto the walkway, providing a safe and comfortable path to walk on. This would be done in front of hundreds of onlookers. When the time came to pull the rope, a terrible error occurred. The rope snagged on the tub and pulled the tub, gravel and all, onto Bill. He was crushed and killed instantly, ending his short-lived legacy. Bill's death marked a new beginning for sand. Gravel ended up succeeding and was bought by parks and railway companies all around the world. This boosted the sand market and brought the company back up. No new heir would take over the company and Bill's wealth was split among his nieces and nephews. Two years later, war would strike Europe. As the war began, sand went free market. Several different companies began to produce and sell sand, although only the original sand company would continue to produce gravel. This boom in production and sales helped to stimulate the world economy as war ravaged Europe. Over the course of World War I, sand as a market flourished as it was bought by armies to make sandbags. These were placed on tanks and along trenches and barricades. This was for additional protection to the soldiers as it was found sandbags could stop bullets. After the war ended, sand began to scramble to reach the sales points it had reached during the war. From 1919 to 1921, sand was marketed as a cure-all for any ground-based problem. Only one of these supposed cures ended up being successful and was not a dirty snake oil trick by the charlatans of the 20s. This invention was concrete. Concrete was invented in 1920 by Buck Luckley when he mixed sand and some other garbage together with water. This became a staple in buildings and the construction of major infrastructure. In 1922, while watching Nosferatu in theaters, the first villain in sand's history, Gabriel Alford Jr., became so enraged at the idea of movies that he devised a plan to stop people from seeing them. The following year, Gabriel finished his dastardly invention, a screen with fans behind it that would blow sand into the eyes of theatergoers whilst the movie played. Ideally, this would irritate the customers and drive them to hate movies as much as he did. After laundering several thousand dollars that he obtained through back alley dinosaur bone trades, Gabriel obtained enough money to buy a theater and build his trapped screens. Just in time for Christmas of 1923, Gabriel would open his theater in North Philly. At the time, Gabriel's theater was the largest in the world, boasting a whole three showrooms instead of the single showroom that all other theaters had. 
His idea was to get as many people into the theater as possible and sandblast all of them at the same time. This plan would go on to backfire, however, as people loved having the air blow on them while they viewed the movies. The sand did irritate some people, but being Philadelphians, most of them thought it was flavoring for their popcorn and went on with their lives none the wiser. The following month, in 1924, Gabriel accepted his defeat and moved on to refine his screens using inspiration from the compliments he received from moviegoers who attended his theater. He would go on to invent the first air conditioning units and begin his life as an entrepreneur. As the Great Depression began to grow worse, Egypt decided to spend all of their money on sand so they could fill the Sahara with it. They also used some to build hundreds of sand-based structures so they could pretend like they have any cultural history. In reality, Egypt was dropped into place by God in 1927 after he finally came back from his bathroom break while building Earth. After this huge sale to Sand Incorporated, the company had enough money to fix the Great Depression, but blew their gains on state lotto tickets, winning only $250 in the process. Tennessee State, being none the wiser, blew the lotto tickets on a lifetime supply of Cracker Jacks. As tensions build in Europe, France decided to guard their beaches using sand as they believed the Germans were afraid of it. They were unsuccessful as the Germans had been using sand as a topping for sauerkraut for the past two decades. Between the years of 1938 and 1945, Nothing happened. History took a break to watch Tom and Jerry reruns on Boomerang. In a bold move by Sand Incorporated, the company decided to sell their entire stock of sand to Atlantis in order to cover the entirety of the ocean floor with it. Now, this wasn't the original goal. Atlantis made a mistake with the shipping info, and Sand Incorporated couldn't find their address. They decided to just start dumping sand into the ocean, in hopes that they would eventually place the sand in the right place. They did this three different times from 1948 to 1951, and at the end just assumed they succeeded because Atlantis stopped calling about it. Come to think of it, they were just never heard from again after that point in time. In 1955, Sand Incorporated disbanded into two separate companies, one for gravel and one for sand. Although this would be the last time the two corporations would be on good terms with each other. Twix thought this was a marketing scheme and did the left and right Twix split years later in 2012. Mike and Ike did it too, but they were not inspired by Sand and Gravel. Two years after the split, Sand Incorporated went into business with McDonald's in an attempt to prove that sand could be edible. McDonald's wasn't looking to prove anything and was just trying to cut down on bun costs. Sand Incorporated's slow growth over the years caused it to finally collapse in 1960. Sand from here on is solely a product and not attached to a company. The following year, the United States CIA gained control over the educational section of the United States. They did this as a part of the CIA's mind control experiments. Later into the year, the CIA brainwashed everyone on Earth into believing that sand had been around since the creation of Earth. This was done to make it look like Arnold and Bill Gromsberg were frauds, pickpocketing the world's money and embezzling thousands from the US government through various IOU agreements on furniture rentals. Any and all sources claiming sand having been around longer than 1878 are false. Wake up. Do not believe their lies. The mass misinformation campaign led by the CIA concluded the following year in 1962. Nearly everyone on the planet was brainwashed. The previous workers and leaders of Sand and Gravel Incorporated were hunted down and killed in order to avoid the truth leaking back out into the world. Unknown to the CIA, a time capsule containing the truth was buried by Stephen H. Gromsberg, son of Bill Gromsberg, back in 1950. It would stay hidden until recently in 2019. Following eight years of silence about sand from the water public since the execution of Sand Inc.'s ex-associates, sand made a small comeback as a result of Concrete Co. running out of the substance used to make their materials. This was largely in part due to the weird obsession in the late 60s with building concrete buildings and infrastructure everywhere. In 1972, a philosopher known as Hubert Rupert would theorize that all of mankind was born from the same place. His theory was that we all came from sand. To prove this, he went around stabbing a bunch of people trying to get sand to pour out of them. This caused a spike in serial killers to appear throughout the United States. Most of these killers claimed to simply be followers of Mr. Rupert, some of which include Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, and the Hamburglar from McDonald's lore. In 1975, as the American people were dealing with their murder crisis, the Chinese government decided it would be a wonderful idea to skip the concrete part of making concrete and only use a combination of sand and glue sticks to build their buildings. It was not, in fact, a wonderful idea. Inspired by the record high numbers of murders and collapsed buildings caused by sand, the band Queen wrote and released their hit song, Another One Bites the Dust, along with the rest of their new album, The Game. 
In an interview with lead singer Freddie Mercury, Freddie revealed that Sand had been a huge inspiration for his musical style, and it was sad to see it become such a chaotic part of the world. In June of 1984, Franklin Granola of Granola Enterprises decided to put sand in some of his test granola bars. He discovered that most people who tried them barely even noticed, so he just kept putting sand in them. He would eventually go on to found Nature Valley and ruin the days of millions of people worldwide. In 1988, the entire world came to a standstill. Literally. The Earth stopped spinning and so did the orbit. The current running theory is that God went to the bathroom again and paused this time so he wouldn't miss anything. The Earth started spinning again the following year, but it messed up everyone's schedules, so the world governments got together to find a solution. The solution ended up being the invention of the leap year. This isn't sand related, I know, but it's a pretty cool part of history, so I'm including it. Are you mad? Well, cry about it. The first 90s kid is born on January 1st, 1990 at 12 a.m. Strangely enough, she is the daughter of Nathan Gromsberg, the great-great-grandson of Arnold Gromsberg. Thus, she is the would-be heir to Sand Incorporated if it were still around today. The USSR disbanded the following year of 1991. Many think it was Metallica's performance in the USSR that made everyone realize that communism is for chumps. But in reality, it was just Gorbachev getting distracted while playing in a sandbox and Boris Yeltsin using that opportunity to overthrow the government. Following this incident, the United States adopted the idea that every house should have a sandbox as a means of fighting communism. Most people by that point actually had backyards, so sandboxes finally became mainstream, but most people just used them for their kids. Somewhere in the cosmos, Bill Gromsberg was smiling down at his creation and all those who were enjoying it. Seven years later, in 1999, the CIA would get sloppy, and someone from the old Sand Incorporated team who had been in prison for his crimes against the state would escape. He would begin a long 20-year journey on foot to the resting location of Stephen Gromsberg's time capsule, knowing it was the only way to stop the CIA and return the world to its proper state. The arrival of the new millennia came without a struggle. Nope, nothing at all happened before this to make this year even slightly terrifying. Anyways, on April 7th, 2000, the World Sand Bank was established. It was the first of many banks to attempt to utilize sand as a currency. The only nations it managed to persuade into this practice were Somalia and Laos. This lasted it all of a year though due to some rather terrible reasons. September 11th, 2001, the worst tragedy in American history occurred. Hijackers belonging to the terrorist group Al-Qaeda took four planes and crashed them into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. One plane failed to reach its destination and crashed into a field after the passengers retook control of the plane. It was a horrible event that scarred millions around the globe. During the following months, President George Bush gave several speeches nationalizing the people and igniting patriotism. However, his target strangely enough wasn't the culprits who orchestrated the attacks. It was the soil on which they stood. Bush wasn't after Al-Qaeda. He was after the sand their homeland was known for. This was extremely strange to many people, and several theories began cropping up, the most well known as of late being that he was after the last few nations who knew the truth about sand, and the entire thing was done to get an excuse to invade the Middle East. We have yet to see if this is the truth, but it is the most plausible theory. In 2003, the United States began large-scale military operations in the Middle East. As expected, the second they dropped out of their trucks and aircraft, they just started shooting the ground, spending countless bullets on the ground instead of firing them at the numerous Al-Qaeda troops surrounding their position. This would go on for the next nine years until 2012, when public uproar about these operations would reach its peak. In 2005, with the creation of YouTube, many people began posting videos of sand. No one really knows why, but it was kinda cool I guess for the time. Oh, and Hubert Rupert finally died that year. He tried finding out if he was made of sand and died promptly after. 2008. Obama takes office after a lengthy run. He would be the first president of the United States to run as part of the sand party. This party aims to be like the Democratic Party, but with the only difference being that buckets of sand were required to be present at every rally and speech that the president attended. The recession of 2009 went into full swing as the Sand Party spent all the nation's money on sand. This has been widely regarded as a bad move. The roar of hatred from the American people came to its peak in 2012. It was swiftly dismantled as Obama realized the jig was up and just killed the leader of Al-Qaeda, which they could have done at any time, announcing the end of the war. Vine Compilation 45 featured a single sand video throwback in January of 2015. This was the only significant thing to happen that year. After 20 years of wandering, the guy I mentioned earlier who escaped from the CIA finally found the time capsule, in the back of a Denny's in southern Michigan. He promptly opened it and took its contents straight to NASA. There, they all learned the truth and used a satellite to unbrainwash the world. 
The following year, the CIA, after having been defeated by the mass protests caused by the leakage of the sand truth, decided to say it was all a ploy by the Russians in order to keep the sand for themselves. This didn't work out too well for them, and they had to return to being a normal, counterintelligence agency. As one last act of aggression, they leaked the virus Sandvid-19 into the world and caused a mass pandemic that forced billions to quarantine. That brings us to now. We recently found a cure for Sandvid-19 and have been dispersing it across the globe. The truth about sand is being taught in every school on Earth. The world is healing and flourishing. The old martyrs of Sand Incorporated have been given a memorial building in New York City on the site of Bill Gromsberg's death. Plans have been made to build a massive college dedicated to the history of sand, this video being the first of many to chronicle it. The world is at peace. And so, that brings us to the end. The end of an era of history, and the beginning of another. Sand will go on as it always has, and we will be there to record and preserve it. If you liked this video, then consider checking out our video on the history of gravel, or our video on the history of French-Canadian arm wrestling. Make sure to smack that like button and subscribe! Peace!